when I walk around and visit the Catholic schools in our county, St. Lawrence and St. Mary's, the teachers have made small little boxes or containers where the children, when they have questions, write them down and then put them in the box. And then when Father Mayen or myself visit the classroom, they automatically have some place to go and questions to ask us while we walk into the room. Sometimes the questions uh, are funny. Sometimes they're very serious. This past week I was asked the following question. Father, have you ever told someone someone else's sins that you heard in confession? I asked the question and then I paused and I said, if I did, I wouldn't be standing before you. Because breaking the seal of confession is an excommunicable sin. If a priest breaks the seal of confession, he is excommunicated from the church. So I said, I have never broken the seal of confession. They said, you can never tell anyone? And I was like, no one. Here in Dearborn County, in one month, 42 hours of confession are offered. 42 hours of confession are made available every single month. Father Man and I hear half-hour confessions before every daily Mass, and there's 12 hours of confession on the first Friday and the third Friday of the month. If you begin to do your math, it adds up to quite a lot of opportunities for people to go to confession. I thought on this Sunday, be a little scandalous, would you like to know what I hear in the confessional? <laughs> I'll tell you. One of those common things I hear in the confessional is this. Bless me, Father, for my, bless me, Father, for I have sinned. My last confession was a week ago. And Father, I just seem to always confess the same things. Bless me, Father, for I have sinned. My last confession was a year ago. And Father, every time I come in here, I just seem to always say the same things. Bless me, Father, for I have sinned. My last confession was 30 years ago. And Father, the reason I stopped going to confession was because I always kept saying the same things. Our Gospel passage today from the Gospel of Mark clearly puts forth the reality that we're not supposed to keep doing the same thing. We're supposed to cut it off or pluck it out. God wants us to remove the things from our lives that hinder us from living our life as a disciple, but from living our life with joy, from living our life with purpose, and we need to cut it out. So please finish this, this biblical passage for me. What does Jesus say today? If your hand causes you to sin, if your foot causes you to sin, if your eye causes you to sin, let me ask you a question. Has your hand ever caused you to sin? No. Has your foot ever caused you to sin? Has your eye ever caused you to sin? Has the devil ever caused you to sin? And that actually is a lie. If you just answered yes, that is a lie. You are a human being, and as a human being, you have free will. What makes you different than an animal is that you have free will. In fact, if you don't have free will, particularly in relationship with the devil, then you would be demonically possessed. And we have to call Father Vince Lampert, and then it gets into a big mess. The reality is, is, is that we choose to sin. And what Jesus is getting at in today's gospel is that we, not only do we choose to sin, but we choose to allow the things that lead us into sin to be a regular part of our daily life. Every sin that we commit is surrounded by a circumstance, an environment, and relationships that lead us down to a road of self-destruction. And Jesus is inviting us today to look at that environment and those circumstances and those relationships and to say, cut them off. What's the definition of insanity? 
doing the same thing over and over and over again and expecting what? Different results. So this is what happens when many people come to confession. They come to confession, they're forgiven. But then they don't change anything. Oftentimes when someone comes to confession, I'll say to them, when you walk out this door, after you receive absolution, your sins are forgiven, you are washed clean, you are made new, you are as innocent and pure as you were in the day of your baptism. Like, think about how awesome that is. But just so you know, as soon as you put your hand on the door and the door is open, the exact same temptations and situations and relationships that led you here are all there. If you don't do something different, nothing changes. And the majority of us just think like, okay, I go to confession, I get forgiven, great. But we have to do something. And Jesus says it has to be pretty dramatic. Blessed Father, for I have sinned, my last confession was a month ago, and Father, I just keep doing the same things. Normal is toxic. Comfort is toxic. And yet so often we choose the things in our life that lead us down really bad roads. I'd like to talk about this in a more particular way through the seven deadly sins. Do any of you guys remember a movie uh, from the 1990s with Morgan Freeman and Brad Pitt called Seven? Anybody see this movie? Okay. If you've seen it, you might need to go to confession. I am not promoting the movie Seven. However, I just need to admit that the movie... It was the first time I had ever even heard that there were seven deadly sins. Badly catechized, badly formed. I, I didn't know there were seven deadly sins. The movie opened my eyes to it in a very dramatic fashion. And in fact, in the midst of the movie, Morgan Freeman goes to the library and looks up what the seven deadly sins are. And actually, like, in that part of the movie, it's actually he speaks about St. Thomas Aquinas and uh, the Roman Catholic Church. So what are the seven deadly sins? I like to break them into two categories. The first category has to do with pleasure and comfort. This would be gluttony, lust, sloth, and avarice. Avarice would be like materialism, desiring love of money. Okay? So gluttony, lust, sloth, and avarice. All about comfort, all about pleasure. The other three have much more to do more with our belief, our intellectual understanding of who we are, who other people are, and how we process things. That would be pride, envy, which is the last two commandments out of the Ten Commandments, right? Thou shalt not covet your neighbor's goods. Thou shalt not covet your neighbor's wife. Desiring what someone else has for ourselves. When we have a list of things we should just be full of gratitude for. And then lastly, anger. The rage that wells up within us because of injustice done to ourselves or done to others. Gluttony, lust, sloth, avarice, pride, envy, and anger. Why do we fall into these sins? Blessed be Father, for I have sinned. My last confession was a month ago, and I've committed the sin of gluttony, Father, countless times since then. Okay, could you please explain? Father, like every single night, I grab a bag of potato chips, I start watching the evening news, and Father, I eat the entire bag every night. Okay, May, do you mind if I ask a few questions? Yeah, go ahead, Father. How much celery is in your house? How many bags of carrots are in your house? How many cucumbers are in your house? Well, Father, I don't have any of those. How many bags of chips do you have in your house? Oh, Father, a lot. <laughs> what does our Lord say to do if our hand causes us to sin? We should... So then I ask the question, why do you ever buy potato chips? Where have you ever read in your whole entire life that a potato chip is part of a nutritious diet? 
How is a potato chip helping you to become a better version of yourself? Blessed Father, I said my last confession was a few weeks ago, and Father, I've been drunk multiple times since then. Do you mind if I ask a question? Sure, go ahead, Father. Is there alcohol in your house right now? Yes, Father. Do you really want to stop this sin in your life? Well, yeah, Father, I do. Well, then why is there alcohol in your house right now? Do you want to stop? After a night of eating potato chips, after a night of getting drunk, do we feel joy? Do we feel freedom? Do we feel peace? Or do we truly realize that we are much less than we are called to be? Blessed Father, for I have said my last confession it was two weeks ago since I've looked at pornography about ten times. First question I always ask, bedroom, bathroom, or basement? Three words that all start with B that a phone or a computer should never be in. Bedroom, bathroom, or basement? Uh, bedroom, Father. Phone or computer? Computer, Father. Do you have a sledgehammer? <laughs> so first question to ask is, why am I taking electronic devices into three places that it makes no sense to have an electronic device in? Do I want to stop or do I just want to be forgiven to end up in the same place again? Blessed Father, I have sinned, my last confession it was about three weeks ago and Father, I've had premarital sex. Okay? Have you talked to your boyfriend or girlfriend about how this is not who you want to be and it's not what you want for them? Well, no, Father, I've never done that. Have you thought about talking to your boyfriend and girlfriend about what you're doing and how this is not what God wants for you or for them? No, I've never thought about that, Father. Let me ask you a question. When these things happen with your boyfriend or your girlfriend, do they happen when you're hanging out with your mom and dad, playing cards or watching a movie or going for a walk in the park? No, Father. Do they happen when you're at Skyline? No, Father. Do they happen when you're out with a group of your friends having a great time playing ultimate frisbee? No, Father. Well, then what are you doing with your boyfriend and girlfriend and why are you doing it? And is that situation leading you to a place that is actually toxic, not only for you, but for their soul? Blessed be Father, for I have sinned. I am angry all the time. I curse and I yell Father, I hate all the politicians in our country, and I think our country is going to hell, Father. <laughs> Someone's identifying. <laughs> so then I ask them, how much news are you consuming? Oh, Father, the television's on all the time. How's that going for you? Has you watching the news made your marriage better? Your relationship with your children better? Do you find more peace, more joy in your life by watching the news? And has you watching the news changed one thing in America and made America a better country? As you become indoctrinated by the toxic culture and the anger that they have themselves? Why don't you go outside your, go, go outside your house, go for a walk, visit your neighbor, and do something charitable. You want to change the world? You want to change America? Do something. And find your anger going away. Do we want to change? I believe that we do. In fact, I believe that's why every single one of you got up this morning and came to Mass. Not just out of obligation, but because we know in our hearts that the lives that we live are less than what we want. That God has something so much more for us, and it's possible. And we can't blame our sins and our behaviors on anyone else. Now, yes, there are times where people have done terrible things to you. Whether it be abuse or neglect or hurt, there are people that have done horrible things in your life to you. But when we talk about what we are culpable for, these are choices that we make. 
And it's often the choice to remain in the environment, in the situation, in the relationships, and to not cut them off. Blessed Father, for I have sinned. The last confession was a few weeks ago. And Father, I gossip all the time. Really? Tell me about that. Well, Father, like I have these, like, these friends and like we just get on the phone, we just start talking and then we're talking about this person and about this person. About how many people do you do this with? Well, Father, there's really just two of them. Um, how often do you talk to them? Oh, multiple times a day, Father. Those aren't your friends. Those people are not your friends and you need to end those relationships. If you're friends with someone, at the end of spending time with a friend, you should feel like you've become a better person. You should feel joy and peace and excitement to be with this person again because they've changed your life and made you who you are called to be. If not, they're not your friend. Who is God calling you to be? And what in your life in the circumstances, in the culture, in the surroundings, in your relationships, need to be cut off so you can be set free. So often we feel that we are a slave to our circumstances, a slave to our sins, and that is not God's plan for you. I have found in my own life, in working with so many other people, that's when we make these commitments that we truly see our life change. When we make small, incremental increases in virtue and in grace, our life changes. When we commit to something radically to daily change our life, our lives really change. I want all of you, before Mass ends today, it's not even a homework assignment because you're, like, it's, it's going to happen right now. You don't need to go home and do anything. Because before you leave Mass today, I want you to make a commitment. What is one thing that you know in your life that needs to be cut out or plucked out of your life? What is one thing, what is one change that you can make today so that you can live in freedom? And I want you to commit to that and I want you to commit to it radically. Every day. Every day. To make that commitment every day. And you will slowly see freedom in your life increase. Joy in your life increase. Your relationships will become more alive. We make the decision to cut something out. Many of you know I mentioned in a homily earlier this year um, that I'm doing this crazy, crazy push-up challenge. January 1st, one push-up. January 2, three push two push-ups. January 3, three push-ups. January 4, four push-ups. One more push-up every single day. Today is the 269th day of 2021. I will tell you, if you make the smallest increase and commit to that every single day, your life will change. I can do 269 push-ups a day and just be like, oh, what? no big deal. I did 268 yesterday. 267 the day before that. But if you were to ask me on January 1st to do 269 push-ups, I would have laughed in your face and run away from you. If you were to ask me on January 1st to do 100 push-ups, I couldn't do it. Every single person in this church has the ability to cut something out and to change their life and to live in freedom. And that's what Christ wants you to do. If it causes you to sin, cut it out. And choose freedom. And you will see yourself grow. And you will see endurance and strength in ways you can't even imagine. So what about you? What is it in your life this morning that you woke up with that's a burden in your life that needs to be removed? What struggle in your life do you have again and again and again that needs to be changed? God wants to set you free. He doesn't want you to be a slave.
He wants you to be free. Choose that freedom, to, choose that freedom today. Choose that freedom every morning. And know that the good Lord is with you to lead you and to guide you. Amen.